Jesus. We come before you right now, God. We thank you and praise you for another day you allow us to see, God. We thank you, God, for allowing us to come together one more time, God, joining together as your people, God to learn of your word, God. Oh, God, we thank you for your word on tonight, God. It's power in your word, God. And, God, we need the word, God, so we can live by it, God. And, Lord, so we can grow, God, and be all that you are calling us to be, God. And we thank you, God, for Apostle God, how she just opened up her heart, God, and her mind and her spirit, God, to feed your people, God. Give us what we need. We thank you for her, God. And, God, I pray that you open the witness of heaven, God, and pour our blessings upon her, God, blessings that she's not even expecting, God. We thank you for it, God, for using her on tonight, God. Send the word and send it with power and anointing, God. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Uh, the Cornerstone Deliverance Church. This is our discipleship one class that we have on um, first and third Tuesday of the month, and we thank God for um, Evangelist Fletcher opening us up in prayer. Amen. Thank Amen. God. This, this, the dialing number for this class is five five nine seven two six thirteen hundred, and the access code is one three nine nine four nine pounds. And um, the website is www.cornerstone deliverance church. This class is on faith and repentance. Faith and repentance is what this class is on. And we're going to go back. The step that we left off on from, I believe it was, it could have been last Wednesday, was faith the first step toward God. Faith is the essential first step in the plan of salvation. Faith means to have simple trust and confidence in God and in his word. To have faith is simply to believe, to depend and reply and and rely upon God. So we find that um, in having faith, we have to believe and the redemptive plan of God for uh, mankind was our faith being in Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That's the finished work that he had done at the cross. That's the redemptive plan in which man knows salvation. So the word of God, uh, the the, the, um, text says here, God is having faith in God and in his word, amen? And you find that Jesus Christ, who um, died on the cross for our sins, that he is the living word and that his spirit that was given back to us as a paraclete, the Holy Ghost, he is the spirit of truth, and we know the word of God to be truth. Amen? So the word, whether in written form or living form or by the spirit, is inseparable. Amen? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is one. That we are to have faith, in which, which faith means to simply believe. God has made it simple for his creation. Amen? I tell you, man makes it hard, but God has has made it simple. And God wants us to depend and rely upon him in all things. He don't want us looking to man for things. Amen. He said, acknowledge him in all of his ways, in all of our ways, and he will direct our path. So you find that at times we have situations and circumstances and we're dependent on other things, other avenues, instead of taking it to God in prayer and knowing that he will see us through. We can turn to Acts 16, chapter 16, verses 31 through 34. When you get it, can you say amen? Amen. Acts 31. Yeah, Acts chapter 16, verses 31 through 34. Okay. Okay. Amen.
And it says, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved in your house. And they spoke unto him the word of the Lord, and and to all that were in his house. And he, being the jailer, took them the same hour of the night and washed stripes and was baptized, he and his straight way. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. So in order for us to have salvation, that we are to believe on the Lord. And I know that some say that God will, uh, because I believe that he will save my whole household. Your household has to be a believing household in order for you to have salvation. The only way that one can come to Christ, he must come to Christ through, um, come to God. He must come to God through his faith in Jesus Christ. And what it is that Jesus Christ had done at the cross. So it says, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. And what we have to believe in is his finished work at the cross. Amen? Amen. So faith must be in God, the one true supreme power, not in people, institutions, events, or other things. There was a time at the church, and, you know, sometimes in leadership you have to set boundaries because you want to be able to be spiritually what you need to be to, to the sheep um, of God's pasture, amen, because the church belongs to God. Those of us that he has called to leadership, we are here to serve them. And um, because the word of God tells us that Jesus ushered in a new leadership, and that leadership was not Lord and over, but it was in servanthood and in humility. Amen? So you find that uh, we must, amen, we must have faith um, in the one true supreme power, not in people, institutions, or events. There was a young lady that was a member of the church, and she said that her soul is vested in Cornerstone Deliverance Church. And I shared with her, your soul should not be vested in Cornerstone, but your soul should be vested in Jesus. Cornerstone is an institution. Um, and it's a, it, it is an institution that has been set in place. We are a church. An institution has no life unless the, unless the spirit of the living God is present in it. Amen? That's the only way an institution can be something living. It's the same with marriage. Marriage is an institution ordained and sanctioned by God. But if God is not in the midst of it, amen, if both parties are not in submission to the word of God, to God's commands and his precepts, you will find that there will be all kinds of issues. So we're, we're being taught here that our um, faith should not be in people. It should not be in institutions or, or events or other things. So we have to make sure that we keep our faith in Jesus Christ and him crucified, amen, and, and, and him resurrected. We have to make sure that our faith is not anchored in those things, that we keep the right focus. The finished work at the cross is the right focus. Mark 11 and 22, you can pull it up. It says, and Jesus answering says unto them, have faith in God. 1 Corinthians 2, 5 says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. You will find that sometimes when you begin to share the word of God or you begin to give sound counsel, Sometimes people want to know why is it that you always referring back to the word. Those of us that are called by God, anointed and appointed, and sent out to do a work, God, did, he did not call us for us to have our own opinion. Sound counsel is the truth. It is the word of God. So whenever we give sound counsel or anything, we are to give the wisdom that has been given to us from the word of God or revelation by his spirit. Amen. And you will find that people will get a little antsy, they will begin to feel some kind of way when they're not living the word and all you have to talk about is the word of God. Amen. Amen. Faith must be in the name of Jesus Christ. John 1 and 12. Uh, you can pull it up, John 1 and 12, and I'll ask that someone read it.
it all right? I'm reading from the NLT. Yes, that's fine. But to all who but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. So for all that believed him and accepted him, did he give the right to become um, children of God? And this is um, having faith in Jesus Christ, for Jesus is the only name in which we know salvation. First John 5.13, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the same that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So the only way we can have eternal life is that we must have faith in Jesus Christ and his atoning sacrifice at the cross. It is the only way. There's no other way that we can have eternal life. So if anyone comes to you trying to bring to you eternal life through any other way, you know that um, either they error, that they fiend it up in their imagination, or they're speaking by a spirit of error. Amen? Acts 4 and 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other name, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen? So there is no, no, no other name under heaven where we must be saved. We know God as the great I am, but under that name, man do not know salvation. Amen? It is, he has given us the authority, or I should say the right to use his name, in which he has placed power in, and that name is in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? That is the only name in which we know salvation and that is the name that God has given us to use. Whatever you ask in Jesus' name shall it be given unto you. Can someone pull up Acts 3.16? No other name do we know salvation but under the name of Jesus Christ. When you get it, say amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Through faith in the name of Jesus. Through faith in the name of Jesus. Through faith in his name has made him, made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Ye, the faith which is by him, has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Okay, so it says, in his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. Amen? So we find here that this presents the key to all things. Whom you see and know, there was no denying the miracle. Yes, the faith which is by him, being Jesus, has given him, the crippled man, this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. There was no partial healing but a total healing, which is the way the Lord does things. God does things totally. I remember the word of God saying, who the Lord has made free is free indeed. God has not made us free, and we are still in bondage. If we are bound and bound to things of the world, we are that way because we choose to be that way. Amen? I truly believe that if your faith is in Jesus Christ, you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, that God has made you free, but you have to walk in the liberty that has been that has been bestowed upon you at the cross. Can we turn to John three eighteen? Because we find here in Acts that what, what Jesus did, He did totally. He did totally. I remember Him asking um, one man, "Will thou be made whole?" You know, because it's yours. If you could believe, where's your faith? There was in some places he couldn't do no miracles because they had no faith. John three fifteen, he that believes on him is not condemned, but he has believed not. Excuse me, let me start over. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of of the only begotten Son of God. 
Amen. We're all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We're all born dead. The word of God is telling us here that if we have faith in Jesus Christ and him crucified, even though he died over 2,000 years for us, all we have to do is have faith and believe that we shall not be condemned. There is no condemnation in Christ. But those that reject Christ and do not believe the gospel when they hear it, and I tell you there is no other message in which man can have salvation. We have to preach the gospel. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, what it is he did at the cross and how he died in our place, and man has to believe that. We could preach all different parts of the Bible. There is no salvation in that other stuff, but there's salvation in the finished work at the cross. That's why we have to make sure that we deliver the right message. So those that hear the words of eternal life, Jesus Christ, who is, whom is the good news, himself, when we, when we um, offer them Jesus, and if they reject Jesus, the word of God says that they, they're already condemned, that they're already in a state of condemnation, and the only way that they cannot be condemned is by having faith. Amen? Okay, we're going to turn on. Faith must be an ever-continuing way of life. Our faith must remain constant and steadfast. We start in faith, and we must finish in faith. We cannot begin to believe in Jesus Christ and him crucified today, and then tomorrow don't believe and believe that we're going to make it in. The word of God says that the only fight that we have to fight is the good fight of faith. No other fight. Amen. And when we fight that good fight of faith, that's fighting to keep our faith anchored in Jesus Christ, making sure that he stays your focus, his finished work at the cross. Our faith must remain there. We must endure. We must persevere. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 says, watch ye, stand fast, persevere, continue in the faith. Stand fast means to persevere and continue in the faith, in the faith that, that we had in the beginning pertaining to Jesus Christ and him crucified and resurrected. Jude one twenty says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, that we our faith is, is to we are to build it. And the word of God says that faith come by hearing and by hearing of the word of God. And how can one hear unless there's a preacher? And how can one preach unless he or she has been sent? Amen. Amen. So Colossians 1, 22 and 23 says that praise the Lord. Colossians 1, chapter 1, verse 22 to 23 says that Jesus Christ might present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached. Amen? So as long as our faith stay anchored in Jesus Christ and his work at the cross, then it is Jesus himself that will present us to himself. Amen? And, and, and I love this right here because when I say Jesus himself, his spirit that ha- has been given to us, the Holy Ghost prepares us to be without spot and without wrinkle, to present us back to Christ. But the Holy Spirit is Christ himself. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of Christ. And when, when I looked at this text, what I saw was that, when I looked at this text, what I saw was that the word of God said that a man should love his wife, a husband should love his wife like Christ loved the church. Right? And Christ loved the church so much that Christ prepared the church to be presented to him in the manner in which is acceptable to him. And then he presents the church back to himself. Amen? That's how a husband should love his wife, that there's work to do. Amen? That you are, you're supposed to have, um, the, 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 you should be equipped to prepare her to be that what it is that is acceptable, and then present her back to yourself. Amen? Repentance turning from sin toward God. 
Repentance is a major theme of the Bible. In both the Old and New Testaments, mankind is called to repent. Noah was a preacher of repentance and righteousness. All the major and minor prophets were preachers of repentance. In fact, the prophet Nahum, name comes from a root word meaning repentance. So you find that even the prophets, the prophets of old, they had a message of repentance. They went out with a message of warning. Most of them told the people to turn from your ways, give up your idols, break the groves and the altars of Baal, turn back to your first love. I remember when 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 God sent um He sent Jonah to Nineveh to tell the people to repent that they may be saved. Jonah, he didn't want them to be saved after the way they treated the children of Israel. He was like, Oh no. Uh uh-uh. uh. I'm not I'm not going to deliver that word. Jonah went the other way. And Jonah found himself in the belly of the fish. Amen. And everyone that was in that boat with Jonah, it would have been a doom if Jonah wouldn't have told them, just throw me overboard. I'm the reason for you having all the problems that you're having. Amen. You will find that if we're not in the place that we should be with God, if we're not in the place where we should be with God, and those people that um, are connected to us, it can be their doom. Amen. When we're not Mm -hmm. doing what it is that we are supposed to do. So we have to make sure that we align, that we are in the right place, amen, you know, because when when God wrath is coming, those people that are connected to you, is a possibility that they're going to feel their wrath, amen. The judgment, or I should say that the anger of God that was kindled for Jonah for being disobedient to what God wanted him to do, everyone in that boat was going to feel that, amen. They, they couldn't understand what was going on. Jonah had to say that his eye just throw me overboard and your troubles will be over. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. So I have a question. So is that is that equivalent to saying that I am my brother's keeper, I am my sister's keeper, in in a sense? Yes, we are our brothers and our sisters keeper, and it's equivalent to saying that we can't flow in self deception, that we need to own some things, amen? And, and that's no different than knowing that under Joshua that there was an aching in the camp. And because there was an aching in the camp, it affected everything going on in the camp, amen? So they had mm-hmm. to deal with that person that was in sin in the camp, amen? Mm-hmm. And because Achan took the thing that was an unclean thing, They had to kill him and his whole household had to die. Mm -hmm. There's things that can go on in the body that will affect the whole body. When you sin, you ain't just sinning against yourself. Some people say, well, the things that I do, I do against myself. I do to myself. I do alone. But you are part of the body of Christ. You sin against the body. Amen? That's leprosy in the body. That's sin in the body. We're one body. You can't say that you're part of the body but outside of the body because you want to sin. Amen? Amen. Anybody else have any questions? The word repentance is translated from several different words in the Bible. Nakem, Old Testament Hebrew, to sigh or groan, to be sorry literally to have difficulty in breathing while one experienced intense emotion. Genesis 6, 6, chapter chapter 6, verse 6. And it repented, and that's Nahum. The origination of the word used in Genesis 6, 6 is is Nahum. And we said that that word means to sigh, to groan, to be sorry, literally to have difficulty in breathing while one experiences intense emotion. And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. It was the sin that man had committed that grieved God that he had even created man. Sin was just waxing worse and worse. You will find that before the Mosaic law was given, no one was punishable by death for the sin that they committed. It wasn't God did not punish them by death until he gave them the schoolmaster. 
and then the first sin was that was committed, I'm going to find that sin for you. It was very minute. That man had to die. But you mm-hmm. find that Cain killed his brother Abel, and he had mercy. So God is such a loving God. He didn't just, um, even though we knew that Adam and them died spiritually instantly, but when it came down to that natural death pertaining to the sins at the hands of men or at the hands of women, you will find that God has so much mercy on his creation that he first taught them what the wages of sin was before he inflicted the judgment. Come Mm. on now. Mm. Those of us that are raising children, we can't expect for them to know what we didn't teach them. It wasn't their spiritual children or natural children, amen? Amen. You got to train them up. You got to give them instruction. You can't expect for them to know. Um, Shub is Old Testament Hebrew to turn back, to make a radical change in attitude towards sin and God. This is the Hebrew word used most frequently by prophets in the Old Testament. That word is S-H-U-B-H. Ezekiel 14, 6, chapter 14, verse 6, says, Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent, that's the word shrub, and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. In this sense of the word, we know that God did not commit sin, but it rep- he repented means that it grieved his heart that he had created man. But in this instance, pertaining to the word that means repent, that Ezekiel spoke to the children of Israel, you will find that this was for them to repent of their sins committed by them, by them and that they were to turn from the direction of sin that they was in and to walk in another direction. Mm. Montaigne, right, you will find that there's different words that mean repent, but once you get back to the Hebrew origination of the word or the Greek origination of the word, you will understand what is meant by the word that was used. Amen? So Montaigne um, is a New Testament Greek word to think differently, to change one's mind or purpose, a reversal of direction, and this word is used for repent in, in the um, New Testament because the origination of the language was in Greek. And you see here that there must be a change of mind in repentance, of change of direction, not doing the same things that you was doing before, amen. We're not going to be in Christ and continue to um, go and sin and do the things that we used to do. Mark one fifteen, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, Montanoio, and believe the gospel. Amen. This is John the Baptist calling for those to repent. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. This had to be Jesus because John didn't use the word kingdom of God. He used kingdom of heaven. The scriptural meaning of repentance incorporates all of these elements. Repentance involves remorse, being sorry for our sins, regretting our failures. Repentance involves an inner change of thinking, a new mindset, a new way of thinking. Repentance involves an outward change of direction a new lifestyle and manner of behavior. So we find that when we repent, that we are not going to continue to live life the way we used to. Amen? We are not going to lay the way we used to lay, date the way we used to date, drink what we used to drink. Amen? You will find that there will be a change. Amen? Mm -hmm. Our speech will be different. When I say your speech will be different because the more you end the word, it's your speech more likely to be like the word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. You will know the mind of Christ. So I want to repeat this. Repentance involves remorse, 
being sorry for our sins, regretting our failures. Repentance involves an interchange of thinking, a new mindset, a new way of thinking. Repentance involves an outward change of direction, a new lifestyle and manner of behavior. These are all the things that repentance involves. And if these things are not present when someone repents, are they truly repentant? No change of mind, no change in direction, constantly doing the same thing that they was repentant of. So we're finding here that this is the true description of true repentance, amen? True repentance brings about change. We can experience remorse without repenting. Some people cry after they have done wrong, but they may only be crying because they got caught. Some people are remorseful. Some people just uh, upset that they got caught. Amen? While repentance always begins with regret and godly sorrow, it is important that we go beyond just a mere regret to change in both our thinking and our behavior. True repentance will cause for remorse, regret, and a change of thinking, and a change of thinking will bring about a change in one's behavior. Amen? So we have to be mindful that, you know, just because you see the tears, the water flowing from the eyes, you got to sit back and watch some things. Amen. You got to discern. You got to try every spirit by the spirit because we find here that some people cry because they got caught and not because they're sorry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Second Corinthians 7 and 10. For godly sorrow worketh, and this means that the word worketh means leads to, Repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Amen. So we find that the world is also sorryful for the things that they do, but they don't come into a godly repentance where their faith is in Jesus Christ and Him crucified, and they have a change of mind and a change of 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 of, of, of um a change of mind and a change of direction. But it doesn't mean that they're not sorry. So we find here that the world system has its own system of having regret and being sorry, but it does not bring one to salvation. Amen? Amen. And those of us that are in leadership, we need to know the difference between these things. Repentance is a type of death, the death of the old man, sinful man, or carnal man. So you find that when one repents, the old man, the carnal man, the simple man should not continue to reign. If you are repentant, why does the old man continue to reign in your mortal vessel? Ah, bo bo, shit it ain't bo shaba. Hallelujah. Hmm. Yeah, you have to check out your soul salvation. Galatians five twenty four, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. And they that belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Amen? So you will find that the world has a way of loving, and it may be um, lust or other things going on, not godly. Amen? For those of us that be in Christ, we crucify that flesh. Our affections is not affections and lust. Amen? We flow in the love of God, the sacrificial love, amen? Love has nothing to do with the kind of love that we flow in as children of the king. That stuff must be crucified, meaning that you can't dress it up, amen? You can't put a new dress on it, a a, a godly dress, and think ain't nobody going to see it. The word of God says that you cannot dress up the old man, the simple man, that you have to kill it, it must die. One of the ways that we crucify the flesh is through fasting. Fasting will always help you to crucify the flesh because during the time of fasting, sometimes we're turning down our plate or we are committing to eating certain things, and we give ourselves over to God wholly in prayer and supplication and reading of the word. We're just spending time in fellowship with God. Amen? Um, and we are um, blocking out the things of the world. We're not letting anything in. Repentance is symbolic of, okay, let me go back. Romans 6, 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, the old man is crucified with him being Christ, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. 
We should not serve sin. We are now serving righteousness, those of us that have faith in Jesus Christ and him crucified. If you are still serving the sin nature, recheck your salvation. Repentance is symbolic of dying to sin and crucifying the old man in carnal nature. Repentance is not optional. It is a commandment and required for salvation. The only way that one can have salvation is that they must repent. It's a requirement. It's a command. John the Baptist commanded repentance. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 2. You can pull it up to read along with me if you like. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen? Jesus commanded repentance, Mark 1, verses 14 to 15. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. You will find that, John, there's a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. You will find that John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus Christ, and he, his message was the kingdom of heaven. Once the kingdom of heaven was present, the message was the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen? Mm-hmm. The, amen. And we will do a study on the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. The apostles commanded repentance. You find in Mark 6, 12, you find that the message hadn't changed. John the Baptist had one message. Jesus had the same message. You're going to find that the apostles had the same message on Mark 6, 12. And they went out and preached that men should repent. Our message should be a message of repentance. How can people get saved if we preach in every other message but a message of repentance? Amen? How can people get saved when we don't have a message to the sentiment? Acts 3, 19. Repent ye therefore, and be ye converted, that your sins may be blotted out. The only way your sins will be blotted out is that through repentance are ye converted. Amen? It's your spirit circumcised. And your sins are blotted out, not atoned for, but remitted, blotted out, erased, never to be remembered again. And, and you don't have to walk in them to remind God of it. Amen? Walk in the spirit. Live holy. Second Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. I love the scripture. But is long but is long suffering toward us. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. This is this is the, the, the will of God. It, he is willing that not one should perish. And I pray this scripture a lot. Amen. Because we, we, we know that people do reject Christ, but it is God's desire that no one perish. Amen? And, and, if, and if we are going to live the desire of Christ and pray it and have faith believing it, we should have a message of what? Of repentance. We should have a message of repentance. Amen? Amen. Even if you're giving someone scriptures to help them deal with depression, to help them deal with oppression, to help them deal with things pertaining to the marriage, or whatever it may be, repentance should find itself somewhere in there. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Me and um, Pastor Deborah Dean was up at the bank today, and, I didn't, and, you know, there was a young lady that God has allowed us to encounter I didn't hesitate to share track with her and to share the, the, the um, you know, the word of God with her, you know, to, to find out some things about her, where she was in her salvation. Amen? We are called to do this. This is what we do. Repentance is required of the Jew and the non-Jew. Amen? So this is not just something for those that was set aside originally to be the people, um, to, to be God's people. That nation, this is for the Jew and the non-Jew. For what Jesus Christ did, he died for the world. A better and new covenant. The Apostle Paul proclaimed that repentance was not just for the Jewish people. Acts chapter 20, verse 21. 
testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Acts 26 and 20, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then the gent- and, and and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do work, meet for repentance. The works that we should do should be that that would persuade people or convince people, amen, um, to repent. All people of all nations are called to repentance. Jesus Christ, again, the word of God said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and that whosoever, meaning all the world, whosoever will believe, shall have eternal life. Jesus proclaimed that repentance was a universal call to all nations. That's why those of you that are flowing in a prophetic, under prophetic mantle, not all prophets are called to the nations. Amen. But some of you, you are called to the nations. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, just give me a minute. Um, all people of all nations, you read that Luke 24, verses 46 to 47, and Jesus said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name, among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. The, com- the great commission was to preach repentance, was to preach the good news. And we know that good news is not just a statement of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and his resurrection. He, Jesus himself, he is the good news. Amen. Through the preaching of, of Jesus, people receive life. They receive life through the preaching of Jesus. Self-righteousness and good deeds do not exempt us from needing to repent. Amen? There it is. You could be good running around doing good deeds. And if you don't repent, you will find yourself opening up your eyes in the devil's hell. And and that's self-righteousness. The only righteousness that God honors is the righteousness that we receive imputed by Jesus Christ upon our faith being in his finished work at the cross. Everyone needs to repent because of Adam's disobedience or humans are born in sin and no matter how good we try to be, we have all sinned. Our goodness is not sufficient. Your goodness is not going to get you into heaven. Amen? Psalms 51 and 5. Someone pull it up and read it. Fifty-one five. Yes. For I was born a sinner. Yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. Because of what it is that Adam did in Eden, and I was just talking to Prophetess Molly about this, um, pertaining to Eve eating and being disobedient and nothing changed. And if Adam would not have ate, Eve eaten would not have been ratified. But because they moved in agreement in sin and they were married, once Adam ate, things changed. The eyes was open. Hmm. Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Our righteousness is a filthy rag. None of us are righteous. If any of us were, we could have went to the cross and died for the sins of the world. But none of us was. That's why God had to come down himself and wrap himself in flesh. Amen? Isaiah 64, chapter 64, verse 6, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags that we all are as an unclean thing, 
Ah, bo bo shit, it ain't bo shaba. We were all born in sin, shaped in iniquity, flown in self righteousness, not the righteousness of God, nothing that he could have said. And the word of God says that we were all an unclean thing and our righteousness was as filthy rags. I thank God for what Jesus Christ did at the cross. I thank God yeah. that he had a redemptive plan set in place, amen, that we could receive the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ as something that God can accept when he look at man, amen. If God had to look at us and, 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 the, and Jesus' righteousness was not upon us, he couldn't bear to look at us, amen. Mm. Mm. So he clothed us in the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ upon us believing, and he said, that there is no condemnation in him, and where sin abound, there is grace abound more abundantly, but that is not an occasion for us to continue on in sin. For those of us that have truly have a repentant heart, amen, that we have been called out of sin to live a life of righteousness unto God. God's word is the truth. Just because man don't live it don't make God's word a lie. It makes man a lie. Mm. He has enabled us to live a life of righteousness, a life not in sin. But is the, uh, I have a question. Yes. Is that truly possible if we are born into sin and shaped in iniquity when we sin in our minds first before we even have the physical act? Oh, yeah. I, I have some because, you know, I had this conversation with someone before and it was basically like, you know, I don't basically more or less it was like I don't have to repent every day. And, and the way I was feeling was like I have to repent daily because there's thoughts sometimes. Like somebody might do something that annoys me and because I don't verbalize it doesn't mean that I didn't think about it. Amen, amen. And that's living the standard. Jesus Christ ushered in that standard. He says, and I tell you, we, see, we believe that because we did the deed that it was sin. Jesus said, if you think it and do it not, it's a sin. That's why he said, so, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. Have you seen that in the word about if you think it is a sin? Yes. So then that's what I'm asking, then. how can we, I understand that holiness has a standard and that we should live holy uh, want to be Christ-like, walk in righteousness, but is that truly possible? Because even so, it's saying that, like, people don't sin with their mind. Like, I'm just, I'm just I have to just question it. Mm-hmm. No, it's fine. We're going to answer this question, and we're going to make it plain and clear. You are not a sinner because of your deeds. No one is a sinner because of their deeds. You are a sinner because of Adam's disobedience in Eden, and they did not conceive prior to um, the fall. So what has been imputed down the generations was every seed after his own kind. He was in a fallen state, a state of sin. So everything that gave birth through that lineage was born in sin and shaped in iniquity, that you was born with a sin condition. Before you had a thought to do anything, Mm. you was born in sin. So up under the fountainhead of Adam, in which man was a living soul, is sin being imputed. Sin, sin, sin through Adam. That's what makes you a sinner. But once your faith is in Jesus Christ and in crucified, sin is no longer being imputed because you're no longer a living soul, but you're a product of the Holy Ghost, and now life is being imputed. Life, 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 not sin. You are now dead to the sin nature. The sin nature ain't dead. But you are dead to it. You don't have to give in to it. Amen? Mm. Because life is being imputed to you now. That's why I said to understand salvation, salvation is the greatest miracle of all. Just by your faith, it's sin no longer imputed to you just because you believe in what Jesus Christ did. Now it's only life. Life, life, life. There's no condemnation in Christ. Life, life, life. But even in receiving that life, he calls us to live the standard of the word Amen. of God that says that we shall live a life of righteousness. If you're still in sin, it's because it's your desire. Mm. 
That's where your heart is. That's where your treasures is. You can come up out of that. He has given us instructions to meditate on the word, study the word, show that self approved apply it to your life, obey my commandments. Your mind is transformed through the word. Your faith will grow through the word. The word is your arm. Approve your arm. He has given us all that we needed. Amen. But we have to stop being lazy and do it. Amen. Salvation is the greatest miracle of all. Not the blind eyes opening. Not the dumb hearing or the deaf or, or the dumb speaking or the deaf hearing. The greatest miracle is how we can just have faith and now life is just being imputed to us. The greatest miracle of all. Mm. Salvation. Any other questions? Yeah, so then why do some churches teach that like oh, you know, um, like, basically, God's not looking at that as long as you hear. Like, they make it seem like I've been to a few churches, like, you know, okay, what you did yesterday, it, it isn't, like, that's yesterday. Focus on today. But I don't hear them say that whole repentance. It's just like God wants you as you are. But God wants to transform us, not to conform us, correct? Right, right. We have to be transformed, renewed by the thinking of our minds. And a renewed mind um, that's renewed in the word of God will bring on godly behavior. Amen? But when your mind is not renewed, it, it will not bring on godly behavior. And that even trickles not. down to the to the uh, dress code because I was attending a church when I first got down here, and you know I thought like some of the people were new like me because they had on I'm talking about like skin tight clothing, backs out and everything. But as I continued to attend the church, I noticed that this was the dress code of some of the women there. I'm talking about spandex. I'm talking about cat suits and. I never heard one time, you know, no one preaching that there is a standard even to how you come in and dress in. Like, you're coming here, but then after a while, like, it's like you don't, you don't own anything else or can we help you out, like, with something. So it was a distraction, you know, even for me being a female to see that other females can come here like that. Like, is that the non-judging of us as as servants of the Lord, that we shouldn't judge in that manner because God deals with them in his timing? Um, I believe that it's, if, if the word of God is being preached, because we're not there to teach the people, we're there to teach the word. If the word okay. of God is being taught and the people are being trained up, it will bring about change. I believe that. There were some okay. things that God changed about me, and I gave up for the cross that no one else could have um, um, just told me to give up. But okay. from my zeal for the scriptures, and, and they do need to be trained. That's why I said at Cornerstone, we're looking for um, Evangelist Nicole Wallace, the mother, to make us some wraps. Amen? And when people come into the church, whether they dress properly or not, we can give them a wrap, that they know that there is a standard. You don't have to put pressure on them. They won't understand that there's a standard here. Amen? Oh, okay. If they dress is too short, we could give them a wrap. Amen? You don't want to wear the wrap, you know, um, wear a longer dress. You can give them a wrap. Oh, it, it, okay. You know, it's, 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 it's not disrespectful. They will know that there's a standard. Amen? Okay. And those of us that have been in the ministry for a while, if, if we are not changed in conversation and dress, in our behavior, you will find that when the world comes in, what do they have a standard to conform or change to? Uh, yeah. They don't. If we're preaching with hoop earrings, things hanging all the way down to our shoulders and, and carrying on like the world, pants in, um, in, in, in the pulpit, I, I, I don't agree with pants in the pulpit. I, I believe that the Word of God says, rent your heart, not your clothing, but there's certain things that I just don't agree with. Amen. So you'll find Amen. that all kind of things is going on. They're just doing all kind of things now. And I, and I say, this ain't the church of God. This is the church of men. There is a way to seem a right up to a man. Men just doing what they want to do. Mm-mm-mm. They doing what they want to do. You can't do what you want to do and call it holy. You can call it holy, but just because you call it holy ain't going to make it holy. But even if they preach in the word of God, though, they preach in his word, like is is. I, I just, I'm not trying to 
conflict. Many of you will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I preach the gospel in your name? And I will say, you workers of iniquity, depart from me. I know you not. Amen. Amen. We, We cannot look at everyone else and say, well, if it's all right for them, it's all right for us. You have to know the word of God for yourself and what the word of God is saying and align yourself with that word. Work out your own soul salvation. Live it. There's no way that your ignorance to the word of God is going to be an excuse because the word of God tells us that ignorance is not an excuse. Amen. Amen. It's not an excuse. There is a standard. Amen. There's certain things that, you know, depending on if, if I have one, I'm very uncomfortable. Amen. Sometimes I, I have on sweats, but I throw my long skirt up over the sweat. So, you know, it's, 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 it's a conviction of the Holy Spirit. I believe the more we in the Word, the more we understand the Word, the more we apply the Word into our life, the more the Holy Ghost is saying, not that. You won't be putting on that. You won't be doing that. You won't be saying that. Amen. 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 And we're looking for that conviction because we know that that conviction, that reproof, that chastisement, that's the love of God. I want him to love me enough to set me straight. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, we thank you on tonight for your word that came forth, O God. We thank you for the provision. We thank you for the grace that we can apply it and live it that it will yes, be our Lord. lifestyle in the name of Jesus by the blood. But we yes, thank you for Lord. making us into instruments of righteousness so we can be an example to those that we encounter, O oh God, that yes. we will not only speak holiness as lip service, O oh God, that it will be a part of our dress, a part of our conversation, O oh God. It will be a way of life. It will be a part of our behavior. Amen. Yes, that your Shekinah glory will truly dwell within us. And, and, and illuminate outside of us in the name of Jesus, by the Amen. blood of Jesus, Lord. And we thank you for a repentant heart today. We thank you for a change of mind and a change in direction according yes. to your word. Hallelujah. We thank you that we no longer have repentance the way the world has it, O oh God, but we have it, O oh God, in a way that it is honored and accepted by you. Yes. And we thank you for it this day in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yes. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but shall have eternal life. That according to Romans 10 and 9, that if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he has resurrected, that you shall be saved. Is there one on the line today that does not know Jesus Christ as a pardon of their sins, have not known him in the way that it's been described in the word on tonight? And want, and want that form of relationship, just say, it is I. Is there one on today? Can we share what we have learned on the day? Can we start with um, Evangelist and Nell Clayton? Evangelist Fennell, are you able to share on today? Sister Tanya, are you on? Yes, I'm here. How you doing, woman of God? I'm great, thank you. How are you? That's good. Good. To God be the glory. Blessed and highly favored by the Lord. Under the blood, amen? Amen. Amen. Would you like to share? Sure. Um, I think, not I think, I know the 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 thing that stuck out with me most tonight was that salvation is the greatest gift of all. And you made it clear, really clear, when you said it was not the healing of the blind, not the healing of the deaf, but just the act, just the, the thing that we can have salvation and, and live eternally is the greatest gift of all. And I also like, I also was very intrigued by, 
you you're you saying God has a, enabled us to live a life righteous and not a life of sin, and 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 I I totally I agree with I agree with that, and and it makes it it makes it not easy because I mean a lot of people tell us that you know being saved is easy. It's not an easy thing to do, but because God has enabled us to live a yeah. life of righteousness makes it easier, not Amen. easy, but easier to do Amen. it. Oh, and yeah. and that makes it worth the living. And and the fact that we mm. should have a message of repentance. And, you know, we, we talk to a lot of people. We witness to a lot of people. We tell them, you know, come to the church and come see, you know, see the church and come hear the, the preacher preach. But why are they coming? What, what reason do they need to come? Well, we got good singing. And I agree when you say you, it, it, repentance should be in that message. So they should know why you're inviting them to church. What mm-hmm. makes it the best place to be? Why should I come to your church and not go to the church of God of the ever-living saints down the street? Because they got Amen. good singing too. But repentance should be a part of that message, and that's a great thing. And even when I witness now, when I go to witness, I'll, I'll have it in the back of my mind. To, to talk about, to bring repentance up in some type of way so they'll understand why I'm inviting them to come and join me in fellowship. Amen. Evangelist Tanya, I'm, I'm going to share this to you, share this with you. There's yes, even a step beyond inviting people to church. The Word of Amen. God says that there will come a time when the true worshipers will worship me in spirit and in truth, no longer in mm-hmm. the synagogue or no longer mm-hmm. in the mountain. Amen. So Amen. God has equipped you with a word that if you share the gospel with them and they believe, you can walk mm-hmm. them through the sinner's prayer and they could be saved right there. It ain't about getting right. them to the church house. They could come to mm-hmm. the church house to get developed. But if we truly live this thing the way God says that we should, they'll get saved on the street. Amen. They'll have salvation in the conversation that we're having with them. Amen. Right. Would you, Amen. you you have heard the gospel preach, are you willing to accept Christ? Some people say yes, some people say no. Some people are repeating right. right there with you, you walk them through. That's why in training we all should know how to walk someone through. The word of God in Romans 10 and 9 says that if you believe with your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he resurrected, you shall be saved. So let them confess right. that Jesus is Lord and that they believe that he resurrected. Let them say, Lord, I repent of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Make me over, and I will serve you for the balance of my days. Come up with a script let, that's from the word of God. Get it deep in your spirit. I, I mm-hmm. preach the same word. The same word, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. And then I give them Romans 10 and 9, is there anyone that wants to accept Christ? Amen? They could accept Mm -hmm. them in the doctor's office, on the street corner. Amen? They don't have to come into church to hear the preacher. Because God has given you a word, you fill with the Holy Ghost and power, and they can receive salvation because you have the word of life. Amen. Amen. You have it. These people, you may never see them again. It's but because you gave them the word and gave them the opportunity to say, yes, I believe and I receive it. They receive salvation at your mouth. Oh, bo bo shere bo shaba. Some people go home and won't, won't wake up the next day. Amen. Opportunity. Tomorrow mm-hmm. ain't promised to none of us. So when God gives you that opportunity, it's that opportunity that they can believe. When the deacon right. Philip preached in, to, in, in Samaria, and they all believed, even the witch, they received salvation. They didn't get to the synagogue. They received mm-hmm. salvation on the street. Mm-hmm. So if, if there's okay. not something that you have that you understand, the first part of what I used was John 3, 16, God so loved the world, showing that he died for everybody, and that if you believe mm-hmm. that you can have eternal life, and then what they need to confess. Study... um. Romans 10, 9 through 11, and in John 3, 16, let that be your script. Let it be your script. That was the very word that I preached on the plane. Let them receive salvation at your hands. God has called you to minister the gospel. By the time they come into the church house, they should already be saved. Amen. Amen. Okay. All they Amen. should need is the Holy Ghost if they didn't get it in the street. <laughs> Okay. Amen. This is mm-hmm. we have see there's a way to see we're right unto the man and the end their brother's death. We've been living this thing wrong. 
Mm-hmm. Why is the password more important than the word that you got? I have the word of eternal life, a word of repentance. My word ain't no different than yours. It's the word that have life. Right. Amen. 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 I thank God for the word for the for the woman of God. And she shared so eloquently, amen, because these are the things that we need to know. But I'm glad that she shared it, that the Holy Spirit now is going to take her a little higher. Amen? Amen. Amen. Gonna, and we, we all need to go a little higher. They can receive it right where they're at. You ain't got to come into the church house and hear my preacher. I got a word. By the time you get to the church house, you're going to be filled up with the word. You're going to have salvation. Amen? You're going to be ready to go. You're going to be ready to be a working member by the time we finish with you. Let God use you, Evangelist Tanya. Amen? Let him use you. I hear your heart. My God. I'll be looking to hear what she has to share. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Co-Pastor Deborah Dean, would you like to share? Yeah. Amen. I'm here. Praise God. I thank God for um for the class on tonight about repentance. Amen and salvation. So much. Amen. It just brought back so much remembrance. Just letting us know. I learned that you know the difference. The um I'm sorry, the different meanings um with repentance and how that you know it should bring forth remorse and um you know interchanging of our minds of our thinking. You know, if it's true repentance and it should bring, you know, the outward change, you should be able to see it. Amen. But and I just thank God because um so many points were brought up when um Prophet this um Prophet this Smiley were questioning and it just and your answers and everything just brought back so much remembrance to when I first got saved, you know, I um Amen. got saved on a mighty bishop, Amen, praise God and truly, you know, and even though we were taught, amen, that way, and I always dressed the way I dressed anyway with my skirts and stuff, you know, a certain length anyway, and I was just a self-conscious person as a teenager. But anyway, um, you know, as she was speaking about, um, you know, you go in and then you see different ones, you know, how they dress or whatever. And, Apostle, when you said, like, um, you know, you can't allow watching them. I know you didn't word it this way, but you can't allow watching others, you know, to change who you are. You know, you look at other people saying, you know, oh, I could do that too if they're doing it. I was there at one point, so, you know, I just enjoyed the whole um, message of repentance because truly if it's repentance, you're not, gonna, you're not supposed to allow anything or anybody to change your form. And, you know, like you said, you know, if you go in and the Holy Spirit is just going to teach you all things, even your dress code, and, you know, and we have to be an example in the house of God because if the center people come in and see us, you know, any way, you know, dress any way without jewelry, whatever, which I don't wear jewelry, but I know some do, and I'm not against, you know, who does it, but, um, you know, you wear all that stuff and they watch how we dress, they're going to wonder what is there for them. So as you said, we have yeah, to be yeah. careful, careful as, you know, um, women and men of God, according to how we act, you know, according to how we carry ourselves. Because, you know, they come in, and even when you go out on your job or in a supermarket, and people know you call on the name of Jesus, amen, and yeah. that you professing salvation in your life, they watch it, and, and they watch it for you to mess up. And as soon as you mess up, they're going to be like, mm, he, she ain't saved, you know, yeah. praise God. But I just thank God for the word on salvation. And, you know, on repentance on tonight. And I was blessed, you know, with everything. And I apologize for um, getting on some minutes late. Amen. But I got in late from work. But I thank God to hear what my ears heard and I enjoy everything. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. And we thank God because sometimes our recollection needs to be refreshed. You will find that the apostles, they reiterated many things that it could get deep, deep, deep in our spirit. Amen. Um, hallelujah, and that's what we have to do. We have to reiterate some things, and reiterate it, and reiterate it, and reiterate it. Amen. The number at eight zero four nine one two seven two five nine. Would you like to share? Amen. Amen. Uh, I thank God for uh, the teaching on tonight. Um, just to sum up some of the things that's already been said, you know, repentance about repentance. And, you know, it's the word of God that no man perish. And everyone needs to repent, not just some, but everyone needs to repent. 
to live a righteous life. And we must not serve sin. And to have true repentance, when you get true repentance, that actually brings about changes in your life. So if some things are not changing in your life, like I said, you might want to check yourself because when true repentance comes, a change comes in your life. You don't do the same thing you used to do. You do it differently than what you used to do. And God will continue to lead and guide you if you allow him to. And, um, and what else stuck with me tonight was when you said always, you should always give a message of repentance. And I thank God for those who teaching us tonight. Amen. We thank God for the share on tonight. Amen. Um, Prophet Tamali, can you share? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, first, I'm thankful to the Lord for allowing us to be a forum um, for instruction and understanding. There's going to be some that's going to listen to this message and, you know, have questions answered. So I thank God um, for, for, for good counsel. Um, in addition to um, the strength in the name of Jesus, Like when we say in the name of Jesus, we know that that's strength. In the name of Jesus, in the healing name of Jesus, in the delivering name of Jesus, there's so much power in the name of Jesus. And overall, what I got from the message on tonight was obligation. Um, What is is my obligation um, as being a member of the body of Christ? So it's my obligation to stay anchored in Christ. It's my obligation um, as even a member of the church to go through the training because, um, you know, raise a child in the way that he should go. And so as I'm being trained up, I I look for God to say well done, you know, not people, but God to say well done. So even in that respect, that even opening my mouth, even if I think I know, I want to know that I know. It is my obligation um, to, uh, to repent. It is my obligation, you know, um, to have a changed mind. It is my obligation, you know, to sharpen my discernment through Christ. So um, overall, I got obligation out of the message on tonight. What is my obligation as a Christian? What is my obligation as a servant of the Lord? Amen, amen. And we are obligated. The Word of God says to whom so much is given, so much is required. Amen. Hallelujah, and we are obligated to live a life of righteousness unto God. We are obligated to be great examples. We are obligated to at least give our bodies as a living sacrifice. That's our reasonable service, says the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Is there anyone else that want to share that I miss anybody? Um, 912-996-6489. Amen. This is Angela Fletcher. I praise God for praise the, Lord. the whole word on tonight and all the teaching. And one thing that everything has been covered, but I do want to say I thank God that for a change of mind and heart, that's true repentance mm, for hallelujah. me. And I am just so glad that I know once I accept him as my Savior, the Bible lets me know that it says, it, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Because I have repented and accept him as my Savior, I am a new creature in him. I'm no longer the old person I used to be. I no longer do the things yeah. I used to do. But I have been born again, set apart for the use of Christ. And I thank God for salvation on tonight because it is an important miracle in my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Amen. We thank God for that share. That was an amazing share. Amen. And I love it when the woman of God said, not just change of mind, but a change of heart. Amen. When we truly believe, you will find that our heart is spiritually circumcised. And there is a change of heart. It was King Saul who came into the company of the prophets and prophesied. And the word of God says that his heart was changed and he was and that he was not the same. So you find that there was a change of heart. Amen. And you will find that many of us um 
upon believing um, in the circumcised heart that our heart has changed. But we have to continue on in faith and live a life of righteousness and not turn back to Egypt, not turn back to Sodom and Gomorrah, not turn back to the sin life. Amen? We have to have the mindset that we're going to live a life of righteousness unto God. Isn't that right? Is there anyone else that didn't share that want to share on tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, Sister Stacey, Minister Stacey Manning? Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord, woman of God. Amen. To God be the glory. How you doing? I'm, I'm doing well. Amen. Amen. I'm driving children, so I wasn't able to take down notes, but I did want right. to share this. Um, I do. I thank God for the word on tonight. You know, tonight's topic was truly a blessing because it was on two things that I absolutely love, talking about faith and repentance. When I talk to people, when I'm dealing with people, you know, there's two things that I bring up in my conversations. I know a lot of my family members, they get tired of me talking about repentance, but I just absolutely love how you broke it down. You know, I can't remember it word from word, and I thank God that you yeah. record these to play it back and write down my scriptures because, like I said, I'm driving home. But um, I just thank God for that. And, you know, when Prophet Smiley had asked the questions concerning the dress code, my sister tells me, you know, that I dress like an old woman. And I take that as a compliment because I know that all my body parts that need to be covered up is covered up. Amen. So I thank Amen. God for that. God for repentance, true repentance, repentance from the heart. When you have Amen. said that, about they crying. You know, they because they sorry or you know you know how you word it. I can't word it like you, but amen. Yes, um, yes, yes. That the I, world I, is sorry I, and they have a repentance, but they crying. Yes, and, yes, and yes. They just brought back so many pictures of people that I've seen in church, and I'm like, my God, but what are they really crying for, Jesus? What are they really crying for? Because soon after they leave their altar, it's not all hanging down their nose and tears all on their face. They go right back out, right back out within the same time doing whatever they want to do. And I'm like, that that can't be true repentance. They can't be doing it from the heart. So I do. I thank God for that word. And I thank God for the gift of salvation. You know, hey. I'm just sitting in this car and I'm just so blessed. I asked my daughter, she 12 years old, I said, Mahogany, is you listening? Amen, because you do need salvation. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, I, I'm excited about that word, and I'm really going to, when I get to the house, you make sure you send it to me because I want to play it back and read over those scriptures. Amen. In amen, the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> amen. We thank God for Minister Man and Amen, the Minister of Cornerstone yeah. Delivery Church. We thank God for the woman of God in her zeal. Um, and I'm, I'm so happy that she said that that's what the words that stay in her mouth is repentance. And one of the things that I did want to share, that people don't have to wait till they get into the church house to get saved. They, can, they should be saved by your conversation with them on the street. If they, they should be off of Christ right there. You can walk them through the sinner's prayer. It's time for us to elevate our mind and go a little higher. If they're not going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost on the street with mother, but it was the apostles that came to where Philip was preaching after they had believed and they heard that they had believed, and then they laid hands on them right there so that they could receive the Holy Ghost. But for those of us that are called to minister this gospel, and I heard the word say that the great commission was given to every believer that was called to minister, that we should be able to offer salvation wherever we may be, whether it's in the doctor's office, whether it's in the nail salon, whether it's in the bank, whether it's on the street corner. When we preach it on the street corner, we ain't going to tell them, well, come to the church on Sunday and get saved. Amen. No. We're going to give them Christ right there. We're going to allow them to have a repentant heart right there, a believing heart right there. We're going to allow them to confess right there. Amen. So every believer should know how to walk someone through the sinner's prayer that they can have salvation. Amen. Amen. Without further ado, I'm going to ask that uh, Minister Fletcher just close us out in prayer. I thank God for each and every one of you and the revelation that you shared. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you yes, once more, God. God. Thanking you for this powerful word and teaching on tonight, God. We know, God, that you are going to 
feel us over and over and over again, God, because, God, we, you say he that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled, God. And, Lord, we are hungry tonight for your word, God, for the things of you, God. We are hungry, God. And, Lord, just fill us with your word, God, in the name of Jesus, God. As we go out through the week, God, as we read, God, study, God, and meditate on what we've learned tonight, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, God, just let us be filled, God. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit tonight, God, how the Holy Spirit comes to teach us, God. He comes to lead us and direct us, God. We thank you that he's our helper, God, and he reminds us of the things of Christ, God. And we thank you tonight, God, that he brings all things back to our remembrance, God, which is the word of God, and help us to live right, God. Lord, even when, Lord, things come and make us want to do wrong, God, the Holy Spirit is right there as our comforter and our helper, God. And we thank you tonight, God, for true repentance, God, in our heart, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Now, Lord, as we leave this line, God, bless each home tonight, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, don't let us be the same tomorrow, God, as we was today, God. We thank you for elevation, God. We thank you for growth, God, in the name of your mighty son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Praise amen, God. amen. Amen. We thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for the dismissal. Hallelujah. You are officially dismissed. Go and serve the Lord. Amen. We do have prayer tonight with Evangelist Carrie Ann at 10 p.m. That number is 559-726-1300. Access code um, 535-091-POUND for those that desire to be in prayer tonight. Amen. 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 